Okay, hi, uh, my name is Bob Rosania. We're doing another video here. We're fortunate to be at the University of Nevada, Reno, who is quickly putting themselves on the map for cutting edge FSHD research, treatment and or cure. And I have the pleasure of being here with Carice. And uh, you are working with CRISPR. Uh, she's the first to actually be doing uh, CRISPR technology for treatment or uh, studying of FSH mechanisms, right? FSHD. Right. Yeah. So I'm gonna turn it over to you because I know nothing about this. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, let's start with a, a basic um, primer of FSHD. So FSHD is caused um, by misexpression of the duct spore gene in skeletal muscle. Um, so uh, the disease locus is the D4Z4 repeat array on chromosome 4. And so this is a large uh, array of repetitive DNA. And um, what most people don't realize is about half of our genome consists of this repetitive DNA. And uh, some of it is functional uh, and important, but a lot of it needs to be silenced. And uh, under certain conditions, if it's not silent, it can cause uh, a lot of trouble. And so in the healthy condition, um, this array is actually bound by silencing proteins, which keep the DNA off so that no genes can be expressed. And this is, this is the, the healthy condition. Um, in FSHD1, there is a reduction of the array, uh, which causes the region to lose its silencing. Uh, so these proteins are no longer recruited, and uh, this causes the DNA to, to be turned on. So now it's active for gene expression. And so uh, DUX4, which is expressed from the last unit of the array, is expressed. And this causes FSHD. FSHD2 is a much less common form of the disease. Um, About 5% is it? Yeah. You would yeah, say? Right. And in this case, uh, the arrays are the normal size. So they're still full-sized arrays, but there are mutations in these silencing proteins. And uh, the result is the same. The, 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 the region is no longer silenced and it's active for gene expression and DUX4 is expressed. So why is DUX4 so, so bad? Why is it so harmful? Well, it turns out that DUX4 is, is important for activating genes uh, during early embryogenesis. So uh, when uh, eggs are fertilized um, and they reach what's called the cleavage stage, uh, DUX4 is actually really important for turning on a program of gene expression. Um, so it's, it has to be on at this stage of development, and after that it has to be turned off. It has to be turned off at the rest, during the rest of development and also in the adult, uh, in most somatic tissues, so non-germ uh, cells, not eggs and sperm. Mm -hmm. And so when DUX4 is misexpressed in adult skeletal muscle in FSHD, it actually activates this aberrant program of embryonic gene expression, um, which causes muscle pathology and cell death. So in a nutshell, that's it. And is it fair to say that DUX4 necessarily in and of itself is not a toxic uh, component when per se? When it's expressed at the, the right time and place, it But the body's the response then can be yeah. destructive as a result of that expression. Right, and part of that is because uh, skeletal muscle really isn't the right uh, tissue for this to be expressed. Um, the genes that are expressed are, are really ones that, that you only need at a particular stage in development. And so, um, Hmm. Yeah, the, the skeletal muscle cells see this as a problem, and they start recruiting uh, <laughs> when the cells die, then immune mediators come in, macrophages, and they, they try to uh, clean things up, but um, that's where you get the dystrophic symptoms, uh, inflammation, and, and ultimate uh, uh, pathology. So uh, there are many viable therapeutic approaches uh, to take for FSHD, and um, uh, in our lab we um, tend to study the upstream mechanisms, so how DUX4 is regulated. And in my own work, I've uh, looked at uh, the identification of DUX4 activators as targets for small molecule inhibition, and also um, uh, looked at CRISPR inhibition. So uh, what is CRISPR? Um, well, CRISPR is a very powerful potential therapeutic uh, approach. Um, why is that? It has the potential to permanently correct the underlying cause of a disease instead of just treating symptoms. So it, it really has the potential to cure things at the, the root by, by going straight to the genome um, and the source of the problem. Um, and of course, there are uh, dozens of, of companies that have sprung up over the past few years with um, a projected global market of almost $11 billion um, by, you know, within the next decade or so. So this is, this is a big thing. Um, but the question for us is, can we use CRISPR technology to treat FSHD? Um, and I would say that uh, it's possible. Um, we're still in the early stages. Um, but uh, first, we, we have to talk about the two different ways of using CRISPR. So, the way that most people are using CRISPR is to edit and... Uh, the underlying genome, is yeah, that correct? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so CRISPR involves two components. There is the Cas9 protein, which is like a pair of molecular scissors. 
It's actually a nuclease and it cuts DNA. Mm. And it gets recruited by what's called a guide RNA. And you can uh, design this guide RNA to match any sequence in the genome. Um, so in theory, Cas9 can be recruited to, to any place in the genome. And so if you were to uh, design the guide RNA to target, for example, uh, the dystrophin gene in uh, Duchenne muscular Duchenne, dystrophy, right. um, then Cas9 would cut, come and cut at the appropriate place. And um, if you, the researcher, uh, supplied a correct version of the gene, of the DNA, then the cell's natural repair mechanisms will actually integrate the correct copy in place of uh, the, the, the incorrect copy. And may I ask, how does that replicate uh, that process to, to, to affect the whole... Well, that's the question. How many cells do we have to hit? <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> yeah, so, the, so there are targeting issues, there are delivery issues, but um, essentially Ooh. within a cell, that, that, that's what you want to have happen. Um, so what is the problem for FSHD? Why can't we do this? Well, the disease locus in FSHD is, is uh, just one repeat with hundreds of nearly identical repeats throughout the genome. So um, DUX4 is only expressed from that last repeat. Uh, on a contracted um, allele in, uh, in, in FSHD1. And you still have all of those other repeats, which would get cut. You have um, a very similar array on chromosome 10, and all those repeats would get cut. And there are polymorphic, meaning similar sequence repeats scattered throughout the genome on other chromosomes. So you, you clearly don't want to cut your genome in hundreds of, of unintended places, which would be the case. So, um, so CRISPR editing, as it's normally used um, to cut, really isn't, isn't an optimal thing for FSHD. Not specific enough. Yeah, exactly. Um, mm -hmm. uh, CRISPR inhibition, on the other hand, is sort of an alternate uh, way of doing this, where a guide RNA can recruit uh, a dead Cas9 protein. So now this Cas9 has been mutated, so it's uh, no longer capable of cutting, and uh, it's fused to a repressor protein. And so instead of uh, recruiting something which cuts the DNA, now you're recruiting something which silences the DNA and keeps it off. And that is, um, in principle, perfect for FSHD, because other repeats in the genome, and this, this, these, these types of repeats, should be silenced anyway. They're normally off. Recruiting a repressor to these regions that should be off. It would still be off plus off is still off. Right. Shouldn't cause any, any, any problems. And uh, there's the potential for stable repression to be inherited by subsequent generations of cells if we can actually make this uh, a stable condition. So once you stabilize it, then there would be an offspring that would effectively be cured, and you wouldn't have to do any subsequent further treatment or cure to the offspring. Uh, offspring of your cells. <laughs> uh, uh, so remember, okay. these are all modifications within skeletal muscle cells. We're not modifying eggs or sperm in any way, so that's another important thing to point out. <laughs> we're not, Thank you. <laughs> this is not Gattaca. We were, we were simply looking at this as a treatment for- Thank uh, you for that. Yeah, somatic disease. Yeah, um, within the individual. So the nice thing about inhibition, no, no permanent modifications to the genome. We are not cutting the genome. So um, if, it, if it turns out that it's detrimental to the patient, it can be removed. Yeah. Okay, so, so that's essentially what we're doing. Um, and so we showed in 2016 that uh, a proof of principle study showing that CRISPR inhibition can return the FSHD locus to a more normal uh, repressed state and significantly reduce expression of DUX4 and its, uh, its target genes. Um, in FSHD myocytes in cell culture. So this was all done in uh, cells derived from patient biopsies. So, uh, you know, it's fine to show in this vitro? in vitro, right? right, right. It. So it's fine to show something in, in, in a cell dish in culture, but uh, we're looking for ways of, uh, of testing our new CRISPR inhibition constructs um, in not only patient cells, but also in uh, our animal models, uh, our mouse models of the disease um, in vivo uh, using AAV vectors. Um, so now I just want to talk briefly about challenges for CRISPR as a therapeutic avenue. Um, there are some general challenges which apply to uh, everyone who's interested in using CRISPR uh, as a therapy. And uh, you, you touched on some of these. So one of the questions is, can we deliver the therapy to all the target cells? You know? And uh, will all the target cells be modified if we do? Um, what, are, what is the efficiency of this? Uh, what happens if this CRISPR system is recruited to other places in the genome? You can see where this would be a huge problem for cutting, and, and people are understandably very concerned about, about this, uh, the way it's normally used. Um, but CRISPR inhibition could potentially be a problem, but, but you know, if it were recruited to, uh, for example, a tumor repressor gene <laughs> promoter, <laughs> but uh, what's the likelihood of that? How, how often is that going to happen? Mm -hmm. you know, overall, I think CRISPR inhibition is much safer than uh, CRISPR uh, editing. Um, can these components stimulate an immune response? And you know, there's data to suggest that they, they certainly can. Um, and then of course, will this system provide a long-term cure? 
you know, it's uh, easy to cure things in the short term, but to really provide stable uh, cures and treatments is, is And may I ask you to uh, elaborate a little bit on a cure, uh, d differentiating a cure versus treatment. So does it does a cure in, is yeah. suggested here, if you do this effectively, you go through the protocol, whatever that yeah. is, and then you're done <laughs> versus a treatment where you have to take something prophylactically? Yeah, yeah. Well, is that the distinction between what is a cure versus a Yeah, that's, it's a great point to make that, yeah, everyone wants a cure. I mean, that's the, ID, uh, the ideal, but... Um, I'll be happy with... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll start with, with a treatment, yeah. And then, and we, we don't know, this might be something that has to be, you know... Um, a lifelong thing. A lifelong thing, I mean, uh, ideally, Patients would rather take a pill, um, even three times a day, than yeah. be injected with something, you know, every week or, or twice a month. I mean, um, yeah, at this stage, um, it's just too early to really say what the treatment is going to be or when. But uh, um, the nice thing about FSHD, nice thing is um, there are a lot of asymptomatic patients who uh, have duct spore expression, uh, small amounts, mm -hmm. and uh, they show no symptoms of the disease at all. And so, you know, we really believe that. Uh, anything will help. Just just lowering duct spore expression even a little bit is will be hopefully therapeutically beneficial because of these asymptomatic. Right, and, and Peter describes asymptomatic uh, expressions of nature's already found a cure in, in their own way, whatever yeah, that is. Yeah, because the system wants to go back to being off. I mean, these repeats are meant to be repressed. The mammalian cell has found ways, effective mechanisms of, of silencing um, this DNA. Um, and we, we just need to, to push it, give it a little bit of push. Uh, to get the system like training back. the body, it, yeah. I, I think back of, to the way it's supposed to be. I think of uh, hepatitis B, where you or any of these things where you inject something and the body then learns. Yeah, would that could potentially be a similar type of therapeutic approach that you're teaching your body? Yeah, yeah. If we can do that, that that would be fantastic. Um, but then, of course, there's some FSHD specific concerns too uh, with CRISPR and uh, things that we still need to learn about the disease. Uh, we don't really know how many muscle fibers need to be corrected. Um, you know, if it's every fiber in the body, or, you know, it's going to be a, a delivery challenge. Um, and mm. do, do muscle stem cells need to be corrected? So the satellite cells that actually give rise to new muscle whenever you go through cycles of Myoblast, myo uh, okay. Myoblast is a proliferating muscle cell, so it's already, um, it's already uh, replicating and, and forming new muscle cells. Myo when, when myoblasts uh, fuse to existing fibers, they form, uh, yeah, differentiated, um, yeah, multinucleated myofibers. And uh, it's the satellite cells, um, which are the stem cells in muscle. And so those, that's the population that you need um, every time you work out, every time you exercise and your muscle degenerates. And it's the satellite cells that provide new myoblasts, which then um, differentiate and form, um, you know, uh, fully functioning uh, muscle, muscle cells, yeah, mm -hmm. and muscle fibers. Um, uh, yeah, and, and we don't really know if muscle stem cells are gonna need to be corrected in this disease. Um, you know. We, if they do, then we're going to have to find ways of targeting them, and uh, muscle stem cells are notoriously difficult to target. Um, and then exactly how much of a reduction in duct spore expression will provide a functional benefit, and, and we believe, like, like we, we discussed, that any amount will help, mm -hmm. any reduction uh, will be beneficial, um, but uh, it remains to be seen. So yeah, that is, just, that is, that is CRISPR <laughs> inhibition for FSHD. And nutshell. you had your five minutes now. We didn't press you with. <laughs> Was that five minutes? <laughs> Very neat.